So, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, we're going to learn something very, very interesting, very, very fantastic today. I think a lot of you people who are interested in the subject of Dhul Qarnayn and have studied a little bit about Dhul Qarnayn uh, will find what I will be discussing today very interesting. So we're going to talk about Dhul Qarnayn in the Bible. Now, why are we talking about Dhul Qarnayn in the Bible? This ayah that's in front of you is in the Quran, but I will share something with you uh, before we go into the Bible and see the word Dhul Qarnayn. Now, why deal with the Bible in the question of Dhul Qarnayn? Because the people who were asking the Prophet the three questions, that if you are really the Prophet of Allah, then tell us about the man who journeyed, you know, uh, to the um, to the west and the east and the north, right? And they asked the Prophet about the seven sleepers, and they asked the Prophet ﷺ about the ruh. Now, what was the source of knowledge for the Jewish people? It was their scripture. It was the Bible, the Old Testament. Okay, it was the Torah. Okay, and <clears throat> so we have to, if we are then, then it, we would be interested. In finding about Dhul Qarnayn in the Bible, because that would be their source of knowledge, and what does the Bible tell us about this man that might give us a hint as to which Dhul Qarnayn they were referring to? Okay, what did they mean by Dhul Qarnayn? So, over here, I want to first share with you something very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ba'da a'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam They ask you about ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ They ask you about the one who is ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ The one with two horns. Okay? Now this ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ instead of ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ Okay? Happens because of the an. Both, a lot of you who know the Arabic language will know that when there's a harf jar that would create this uh, to become uh, in Dhul Qarnayn, okay? Whether it is Dhul Qarnayn, Dhul Qarnayn, or Dhul Qarnayn, it's the same word. If you say Aba Bakr, Abi Bakr, Abu Bakr, it's the same word. It only changes to Aba, Abi, Abu because of the grammar, like in this case, because of this Harf Hajar. If you say Ya Aba Bakr, you know, Ya would cause it to take the uh, the Aba, okay? So, in the same way, you have Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram, but otherwise it would be Dhul Jalali Wal Ikrams. And if it is An, like here, or Fi, or uh, Min, like it would be uh, Dhil Jalali Wal Ikram. So just keep this in mind. There, in Arabic grammar, the word Dhi, the Dhu, is a, is, a, is a chapter in itself in the Arabic grammar. Now, let us go to the Bible. Now, where does the Bible mention the word? Dhul Qarnayn. You see how I have Dhul Qarnayn highlighted here? Now you will see Dhul Qarnayn highlighted in the Bible. Dhul Qarnayn. Okay, so what does it say? And this is in the chapter of Daniel. You can pick this up in English, but I'm showing in Arabic so you can understand where the words are coming from. Daniel chapter 8 verse 20. Wa amma kabash. And as for the ram, this is talking about a dream of a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Daniel alayhi salatu wasalam, he had a dream. Amma kabash, and in that dream he saw a ram. Alladhi ra'aytahu, and in that dream I saw him as dhal qarnayn. Dhal qarnayn, the one who has two horns. And who is he? Fahuwa mulk, uh, maluk, he is a king. Okay, madi from the place of Madi wal Faris, a king of Madi and Faris. There's only one king that has ever been known to be the great king of Madi and Faris, the one who is called Dhul Qarnayn because he united Madi and Faris as one kingdom. Okay, and so even the Christian and the Jewish commentators will say this is referring to none other than Cyrus the Great. Okay, now let me show you a little bit more about this. Okay, this is uh, about again the dream of Daniel alayhi salatu wasalam, the ram which you saw having two horns, the Qarnayn. Okay, so this is the dream that he saw of the uh, two horns. Now, <coughs> 
Now let us go and understand who is this. The first dynasty of the Persian Empire that was created by, and this is a very hard word for me to say, uh, Achaemenids. Um, I'm just really bad at this, sorry, but you see the word there. Established by Cyrus the Great, the conquest of Midia, okay, Midia, okay, and Lydian and Babylonia. So he he was, and this is well known if you read his autobiography uh, written by uh, the Greeks, he basically was from Midia, which I'll show you again, and or, or a place, uh, meaning, or a city, or the capital of Midia, uh, and then he conquered Babylon, and he then also conquered Persia, and united all, united these uh, two great nations as one, and that's why he got the name as Dulkarnain, the one with two horns, okay? And uh, so now, let us further study this. Even in the uh, symbols of Zulkarnain, if you or Cyrus the Great, if you look at it, you see the two horns there. You find this in the archaeology of Zulkarnain. And uh, you will also find, for example, let me show you over here. Uh, so again, why is this important? Because it points to which Zulkarnain the Jews were referring to. And therefore, Allah answered based upon that. Okay. And so this is the two horns. And so the wall of Gorgon, which is the wall that Cyrus made, right? And therefore from Quran we can infer this is the wall that's 200 miles long that he made in regards to Ya'juj and Ma'juj, which I'm not going to talk about that too much today. But Cyrus the Great, okay, was a Persian king, right? Who, uh, so let's go over here. This will make it more clear actually, okay? Uh, so Cyrus was born between this and this, either in Mid Midia or probably in Perisus, which is near that, in modern day Fars, okay? So he was basically from this same area that the Bible talks about. So the Bible is talking about this one king who was a just king, and then why did the Jews care about him? Because he is the one who liberated the Jews uh, from their slavery to the Babylonians, okay? Now, what about the other questions? Now, I'm saying this is a side thing. The seven sleepers, Ashab al Kaf was the second question, and Ruh was the next question, okay? So, this is about the seven sleepers, but let's go to the Ruh first, then I'll explain this, okay? The Old Testament, the word for spirit is Ruh, okay? Again, the, where were they getting their questions from? They were getting their questions from the Old Testament, from the Torah, or from what is commonly called the Bible. Okay? Now, the trick, now, the question of Dhul-Qarnayn was a tricky one because it's only, you have to really know the chapter of, uh, of Daniel to, to know that. And Prophet Muhammad was illiterate. He couldn't have known that. But the question of Ruh is very, very difficult to answer. And this is why Allah answered very simply, Yes, alunaka ka ruh O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they ask you about the Ruh, Qul ar-Ruhu min amri rabbi, the, uh, the Ruh is the command of Allah. So whatever definition, because this is all about the different definitions, right? Uh, it appears this many times, it has this many definitions, it's used for uh, wind, and then it's used to the breadth of the, you know, the... Uh, it is the Lord who gives the breath to the people and on and on and on. It has so many meanings, the word ruh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't go into, you know, they didn't define which ruh, right? They left it very general. So if any of the Prophet gave any answer, it would have been wrong. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore gave the answer, Yes, alunak ani ruh, they ask you about the ruh, qul ar-ruhu min amri rabbi. The ruh is the amr of Allah. It's a command of Allah. Whether you call it the wind, whether you call it the soul, whether whatever meaning you want to give it, it's all the command of Allah. وَمَا أُوتِيتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And you've not been given of knowledge except a little bit. So that one, you know, that one question, see, Ashab al-Kahab, Allah answered in a little bit of detail. Dhul Qarnayn, Allah answered in a little bit of detail. This question, Allah answered with one sentence because their sentence was not a fair question. Okay, and that was answered in Sutul Bani Israel. The Ashab al Kahf is an interesting one because, because the Ashab al Kahf does not come in the scriptures itself. Okay, even though the Christians they 
believed uh, the Christians as well as a group of the Jews, they knew about the Ashab al-Kahf. They knew that these were, were Muwahideen, they were people who believed in one Allah, and they were put to sleep. In fact, some Christians use, uh, there's a book that has their prayers in it for people who can't go to sleep. I'm not going to go into that right now, it's very interesting. But uh, they asked about something that was, because this event happened after the Bible had already been written after three centuries, okay? So this happened at a much later time after Jesus, peace be upon him. And these were basically people who believed in one God. And so the Jews asked about the seven sleepers. What's the real story of the seven sleepers? Now, why did they ask? Because they, they, they wanted to ask something from the Bible. They asked two questions from the Bible. One very, very specific that actually tested. One was a trick question, the Ruh question. And one was about the seven sleepers, which you don't find in the Bible. Okay, And so they asked the Prophet extremely hard at questions for even an uneducated person. Right, and so uh, here it is. Here it is. So there was no way for the Prophet to have answered these questions. No way for it to be congruent even with what we have today, other than uh, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself was revealing this to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, and so uh, I will leave it at this. Uh, I wanted to go into a little bit about the wall, but basically, let me just very quickly review. Okay, the Quran says, Yes, Alunaka and Dhul Qarnain. They ask you about Dhul Qarnain, so Allah gave us the story of Dhul Qarnain. The word Dhul Qarnain comes in the Bible, and that he is, uh, is the, the kings of Madi and Faris. Okay, They're, and then specifically their leader, their, their founder, okay, Cyrus the Great. He's actually the second one, but he's the most important one. And then uh, over here in the Bible, again, just to, you know, see what is being the two horns, okay? This is in the King James Version of Daniel 8.20, okay? And uh, then you have this, the empire established by Cyrus the Great, okay? And uh, then uh, you have the two horns there from that same empire, okay? So that became their signature, with Dhul Qarnain. So he's called Dhul Qarnain in the Bible. Cyrus the Great, he also has, he has the two horns as his symbol, right? And what did Cyrus the Great have to do with this very important question, which I'm not going to answer today, but I'm going to leave it. Daniel, Prophet Daniel. Prophet Daniel was the prophet that Zulqarnain was dealing with. And Prophet Daniel was a prophet of great prophecies. This is why Christians pay a lot of attention to the book of Daniel. Okay. It is also the book that talks about the coming back of Jesus in the Christian literature, the same book. Okay. And, and Dhul Qarnain is the one who liberated the Jews. Uh, uh, Dhul Qarnain is the one who liberated the Jews from their slavery, as I mentioned before. And so, uh, and he was born in the areas that are mentioned in the Bible. Okay. He was a person uh, from Madi or M Madia or and Fadis. Okay, and you can do research on this yourself, and this is how, this is where those Jews who asked the Prophet this question, where they got their Dhul Qarnain. We ask you about the man who journeyed, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gave them an answer, because they didn't ask, uh, you, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an answer using a word of the Bible, which is so interesting, because you know it would be shocking to them. How does this uneducated man, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how does this uneducated, unlettered one know this? There is only one explanation. How did he know the answers to these questions? That you know, uh, and so anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Insha'Allah Taala. So jazakumullah khairan. Uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Um, leave your comments, like, subscribe, share, and this is one way. There are other ways to know who is Cyrus the Great, who is the Um but I was trying to use the Bible today because it has a very interesting dimension, particularly in reference to the story in which the Prophet was asked. And this leads to other very interesting points, which I'll talk about later. Assalamu alaikum.